Hi, my name is uh, Nagi Prabhu. I'm the Chief Product Officer at iService. And uh, here is my colleague Mohan Pasapaladi, uh, senior architect in the engineering team. What that means is that if you have tough questions, he's the one who takes it. <laughs> if you want to hang out and grab a beer, I'm here. <laughs> so, uh, so today's um, conversation is about divided into three parts. So the first part, I'm just going to talk quickly about what iService does so that you have a context of what problem we are trying to solve. And the second part is actually the demo where we are going to show how we have integrated iService and Microsoft Teams together in order to solve the problem. And the third part is actually going into the code and show how we have addressed or, or done the calls and things like that to address the problem. So, so who is iService? Um, so iService is the leader in enterprise contract management. So every enterprise in the universe has one or the other type of contracts that they deal with, either for with the customer uh, or the vendor, or maybe corporate contracts like NDA, MNA contracts, and things like that. And iService is a platform on which the contract management can be done for any type of contracts, for sell side, buy side, or a corporate contracts. And uh, just to give a, a quick thing, uh, these are a, a set of customers that are using our platform today. Uh, and as you can see, the contract management is across all industries, uh, across all geographies, and it's a common problem um, um, uh, every enterprise has to deal with. And that is the solution that we provide. And as you can see, we have over 5 million contracts today and 2 plus million users using it. And I think that number is important, the five plus million contracts, is because the time it takes to create those contracts and negotiate the contracts is huge. In certain companies, it goes like 90 days, 120 days uh, to doing that. So the demo here and the use case here is to show how we have used the Microsoft Teams in order to reduce the cycle time. So let's take a quick look at the challenge itself, right? So if you are a person, Larry Legal, the person who is in the legal department, who is responsible for negotiating the contracts every day, um, he has basically two universes. One universe is Microsoft Word. He probably spends more than half of his time in Microsoft Word. And the other half of the time he spends in dealing with emails, collaborating with the different people in the company, whether it is people inside the company, like people from sales, finance, accounting, or maybe collaborating with people who actually approve the contract and the contract language, or maybe collaborating with the customer. So the biggest issue and the biggest time sink in a situation like this is the collaboration time. It is less about negotiation, less about changing the contract, but it is more about the negotiating with the different people involved and the time lag that happens when people respond. And it's proven that psychologically there is 40% uh, productivity drop when people have to go between context switching. So what we did is that as we saw the Microsoft Teams picking as the fourth largest collaboration uh, tool in the enterprise, we said, why not use Microsoft Teams as a way to collaborate across the enterprise as you are negotiating a contract and eliminate this whole problem around the collaboration. So what ha really happens is the, the Larry Legal, who is actually looking at the contract, opens up Microsoft Word. And inside Microsoft Word, we have a Microsoft uh, iService experience for Microsoft Word, which is an add-on. And that add-on has capability to launch a Microsoft Teams. And what it does is, as you are looking at a contract, as you are looking at a language, or as you are looking at a value that is being changed in the contract, you can actually launch a channel inside Microsoft Teams. So the Larry can do that as he's inside the Word. So that conversation gets put into Microsoft Teams. And now he can invite people from different departments into it. So Larry can invite people like Frank from finance and ask a question. And that you can use the 
the team conversation to actually do the conversation in real time and make sure that everybody involved in the uh, um, negotiation process are included. And you can dynamically add new people as well as you go. And uh, at the end, the, the card in the Microsoft Teams has a buttons where you can actually approve, reject, and things like that. And the person who is finally has the approval authority can actually do the approval right inside the Microsoft Teams and never have to leave the Microsoft Teams. And at the end of it, when the approval or rejection happens, the entire conversation around the negotiation is taken and attached along with the contract in the ICERDIS uh, contract management platform. So you have essentially eliminated the entire email flow. You have essentially eliminated the delays in uh, um, uh, going back and forth on email. You have essentially eliminated the context switch of needing you to go into the ICM application uh, while you are approving certain things. So that is the context. And as you can imagine, this is a huge productivity uh, improvement as well as cycle time reduction, which is really speeding up the business. So with that, I want to have Mohan go through the, the demo and then subsequently follow it through with some of the code samples, how we got it done. Mohan? All right. Thanks, Nagi. Can you guys hear me? OK, thanks. Um, so I'll just use this as like the pretext for the setup, right? So just to go over the flow, what Nagi was talking about, there's Larry the legal. He's going to be doing the work. But most of the people in the legal department work in Word. And that's pretty much what they're comfortable with. So what this pivots is, now he doesn't have to really understand the ICM platform. He doesn't even have to log into ICM. He can do everything in the ICERTIS experience for Word, and which will be followed by Teams. So that's exactly what we're going to see how that whole thing pans out. So first is, let's go through the demo of how all of these things would sort of unfold. So let's start off with. Um, so we have four characters here. So if one is Sally, who is a salesperson who is going to make a change in the contract. So she's going to change something in the contract, which basically in, in the contracting world, what we call as deviation. So somebody changes something, and this was what it was before, and this is what after. So now certain deviations would trigger certain kinds of workflow activities. So if you make a change to, say, payment terms or the contract value, whatever, it can trigger something that might pull in a, some other person that needs to approve something or need to review that. So it's all very dynamic in the ICM platform. So we'll take an example of what Sally is going to change first. All right, so in the interest of time, I'm just going to sort of quickly walk you through uh, the platform itself. So she would go to the co corresponding contract, and she would just download the contract. So when she downloads a contract, it's a simple Word document, right? And then she would just open up the Word document. And in this case, she would just make a change. So say the contract said, 45 days before, and she's modifying the payment terms because the client did not agree or whatever may be the reason. She wants to modify that. Now the payment has to be done in like 90 days. It can be done in 45 days. So that's exactly what she's going to change and say it's 90 days. She's going to just save the Word document, and she's not doing anything with that. And then she's going to go to the ICM thing platform and just upload the document. So that's basically what a salesperson does. And at that point, it triggers something in the ICM system. Now, Larry, who is in the legal department, because they've changed one of the classes, which was flagged in as something, if this class changes, then it has to go to the legal department, right? So it's, the workflow was set up that way for this contract type. So now Larry gets an email saying that so-and-so contract with all the information, the metadata was changed, and the whole contract, which we call an agreement, is attached in the email. And Larry just looks at his email and just opens up his contract, which is as an attachment. So when Larry opens the contract, so this is what he sees. So first he sees the contract, 
And then on the right hand side, you can see this is the iCertis experience for Word. So it automatically recognizes this is an ICM contract document. It automatically loads up the plugin that's actually sideloaded into this aspect. And it shows the document and all the metadata that comes with that. So you can look at the agreement and it'll show you all the classes and all the information that comes with it. So now what Larry is interested in is what has changed? Why am I looking at this? So you see a little red thing in here. It says something has changed in payment terms. And then he wants to investigate further. He says, OK, so this is what has changed in the payment terms. And he looks at the versions. And as you can see, there is a change in here. It says 90 days. And at this point, Larry is like, OK, I'm not sure. I don't have enough information. Should I approve this? I don't have a precedence for this. I'm not sure what I do. But I do know this is related to payment. So I got to check with somebody in finance. So this is the part where Larry tries to collaborate. He says, I want to collaborate. And this is where you're moving away from iCertis Word experience to iCertis Teams experience. So at this point, he would just select, OK, which team am I talking about? OK, these are all. So it's, hypothetically, you've created a bucket for saying that these are all May 2018 approvals, right? So all of this stuff goes through this bucket. Again, we, you can create any kind of team that you want, but we just created a hypothetical May 2018 teams. And at this point, you say, OK, I select that. And then it'll automatically show all the channels under that particular teams. So you could have channels categorized any form or shape you want. I mean, you can have one per contract, or you can have one per a client, or however you want to do, but that's a channel, which means all relevant conversation in, in Teams would happen in that channel. So in this case, we've just isolated this to this contract for demo purposes. And he would just say that this is the contract that I'm dealing with, and I would say post. So now when he does post on this aspect of it, what you're really posting is you're posting this message with all the context information into Teams. So let's, let's see what that looks like. Once you hit post, in the, in the interest of demo reasons, you know, just condensing the whole flow. So when he posts, it, it appears as something like this. So as you can see, this is just not a message. So it's giving you a lot of rich metadata. And what we call in, in, the, in the bot framework, in this aspect of it, we call this the card layout, right? So it's a card. And it has, it's an interactive card. So now we have all these options, whether they can approve this, they can reject this, or they can view this in the ICM application if they want more data about it, or you can view it in a tab. So these are all the four options that are provided. So, but, but the reason that Larry did this is because he wants to give everybody a context before he pulls people in, right? So at this point, he would say that, OK, I know Frank in finance. Again, in the interest of demo, I'm sort of rolling through the whole flow instead of typing here uh, uh, at this point. So he would just say, at Frank, uh, I need to run something by you. So at this point, if you look at Frank, he's looped into the conversation. And Frank is from finance. So he gets the same sort of a context. So Frank, finance. So, okay. it's just timed out. Give it a sec. I'll be back. So at this point, he sees exactly the same screen in Teams, and he says that, "Oh, sure, you know, I can help you with that." And at that point, Frank would type something like this. I remember that Lisa at Legal did something like this similar, you know, and, and I think, you know, you can check with her. I'm she would be the best person to reach out. And at this point, nobody's ever done anything outside. They've not gone to ICM, they've not looked into contracts, nothing. So the same the whole experience and collaboration is still continuing in Teams with all the relevant information. So at this point, uh, then because Frank said this, can you help me with this? And then Lisa Legal looks at this document because she gets all the information and all the context of it. She can look at it and say, yeah, sure, we approved something like this. It's, no, it's not a big deal. We've done that, and there's a precedence for this. So go ahead and approve this. And at that point, you know, he gets the message back. And he says, thanks for your help, Lisa. And now, with a lot of confidence, Larry can say, sure, you know, I can approve this. 
and he can go ahead and approve this. Now, before he does that, he can obviously check a few things. So one of the things, experience that we have built in this, there's two ways of looking at it. Either they can click on a button here. This is just for approving or rejecting. In this case, because he's confirmed it, he's going to approve it. He can decide to view this in ICM, so we should bring up this screen. So he can just go into the ICM application and just view it. And they're all integrated seamlessly. So that's one option of doing it. The other interesting option is Teams provides an easy, pluggable way where you can sort of have that whole canvas of your third-party application be embedded into Teams, So, which is a very cool thing. So you could just say, add a tab. Since it's demo purposes, you're just going to pick from here, but ideally, you would pick from the store. And you would say, log in. Okay. And just like that, you can see the, the same application that you see in here, which is a completely third-party application. It opens up seamlessly in Teams. And Larry can exactly have the exact same experience without even leaving Teams with a complete, full, rich UI and all the functionality of whatever the third-party app. Now, in this case, it's our ICM platform. but And he can guess go and confirm this by going and looking at the deviation, because that's what he's approved. And he can compare and see. And there it tells you. The difference, the old one was 45 days, and what is approved just now is 90 days. So everything is good. So that is sort of like, at a high level, what the whole experience and how this demo would flow. Right. All right, so um, do you guys have any questions about the flow? All right, good, thanks. All right, so let's take a look at a little bit underneath the covers of some of the things that went into this aspect. All right, some of the key interactions that we are talking about between various things. So first and foremost, right, retrieve teams and channel information from the bot service, right? I mean, because the bot service is basically, for people who have used the bot framework, the bot framework only requires you to address one endpoint. It's a post message and it sends you an activity. And that activity is a rich object that gives you a lot of context information, things like that, so you can act upon it, right? So that's the first step. And the second thing we did was we, we leveraged that because if you, if you try to do this in a JavaScript or any other thing, it will just get something like a channel ID, and that doesn't give you enough rich information about the whole context, which application, so on and so forth. So what we did was whatever information we got in the first step, we started caching it so that we, can, we actually provided a service within our bot that would actually communicate back all the information that is required for other venues to act on it. So if you pass in a channel ID, or it'll say that this is the user, give me all the teams that this user is a part of. Or this is the user and this is the teams, what are all the channels that the, this user and this team is a part of. So that kind of information. And third thing is, how do we build you know, like templates and, and use buttons and the action cards and things like that? That's another aspect of it. And last but not the least is the ability that I showed that you can actually embed the canvas into uh, the actual Teams UI. So let's take a quick look at, you know, I'm just running short of time, so let's take a quick look at uh, some of the code that went along with it. So retrieving channel information and so on and so forth, it's all, it starts with this particular method, which is the message handler, right? Which is basically the post method that I was talking about in terms of code. You can see that either you get a message or you get an activity, and, and here it's just, you're just figuring out whether it's an approve, whether it's a reject, what, what, what activity you need to do, what was the user's intent, and you act according to that. And the other aspect of this is basically the interactions are related to APIs. So we created another class that is caching all this information and providing this information on demand for some of the other contexts that we are using. So if somebody wants to know, just like I said earlier, what are all the teams that a user is part of, whatever, so we made that cache 
available because there's no other way for you to query from JavaScript or just because based on a channel ID, you can't get all the metadata. So we just provided that service here. Um, and going back to the slide, the other aspect of it is you know, the building the card. So in this case, we did a simple single type of a card, which is basically you know, showing some buttons and so on and so forth that you built. But you can have many complex variations of that. So if the user asks for something else, you could have a different sort of a card to do a different sort of action. Maybe based on the contract type, you can build a different type of UI. So there's a lot of options there, and it's pretty powerful. And some of the APIs are getting uh, even more improved over time. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do programmatically. So are we almost out of time? So do you guys have any questions at a high level? I'm sorry. Yes, we use Redis Cache. Good question. Yes. <laughs> Any other questions, guys? If not, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for, thank your you time. for attending. <laughs>